Now let's talk about resistivity. There are several factors that affect the resistance of an object, such as a wire. The first one is the cross-sectional area of the wire, which means the amount of area you would see if you cut the wire across like this. So using our common sense, is it faster to drink water through a thick bubble tea straw or a thin normal straw like this? The big straw would allow you to drink water much quicker. Therefore, which of these wires will allow electricity to pass through the easiest? E will definitely allow electricity to pass through the easiest, just like the thick straw will allow water to pass through the fastest. Therefore, it has the lower resistance. Therefore, P has the lower resistance and Q has the higher resistance, just because of their cross-sectional area. 2. The length of the wire. Look at wire S and wire T. If there were straws, which straw would allow you to get the water from the drink faster? A long straw or a short straw? The answer should be quite clear. The shorter the straw is, the faster the water would reach your mouth. So, which one of the above wires has a greater resistance? Using the same concept, wire S would have the higher resistance and wire T would have the lower resistance. The longer wire would have a greater resistance. So the third one is the material that the wire is made from. Wires can be made of different materials. These materials may have different resistances even if they have the same length and thickness. This is because they have different resistivities. The unit would be the ohm meter. Resistivities itself is different from resistance because resistivities refers to the innate resistance of the materials. So look at this, silver is a very good conductor and so therefore it will have a low resistivity, 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meters. Iron also has quite a low resistivity but slightly more. So it has about 10 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meters of resistivity. So it is a conductor as well, but it's not as good as silver. Now let's compare it to polythene. Polythene is known to be a very good insulator and it has a very high resistivity. That will be 10 to the power of 16 ohm meters. So the summary, three factors that affect resistance are cross-sectional area of wire, length of wire, and the material the wire is made from, or its resistivity. These can be placed together to find the resistance. R equals to rho L over A, where R is the final resistance of a particular wire, Rho is the resistivity of the wire material, L is the length of wire, and A will be the cross-sectional area of a wire. Let's try a few questions. What is the resistance of a 1.5 meter long piece of wire if it has a cross-sectional area of 2 times 10 to the power minus 8 meters squared and a resistivity of 4 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meters? Please pause the video here and try it out. Okay, now let's go through the answer. First, R equals to rho L over A. Write the formula first, then we can sub it in. Rho will be 4 times 10 to the power minus 8 times L, the length, 1.5. Then the whole thing we divide by the cross-sectional area, which is A, 2 times 10 to the power minus 8 meters squared. After doing these calculations, you, you should get the final resistance, which is 3 ohms. Now let's try a similar question. What is the length of a piece of wire in the solenoid if the solenoid has a total resistance of 20 ohms but then the wire has a cross-sectional area of 4 times 10 to the power minus 8 meters squared and, and a resistivity of 10 times 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meters? Please pause the video here and give it a try. Okay, now let's go through the answers. R equals to rho L over A. Same formula. Summing in, R is equals to rho 10 times 10 to the power minus 8, the resistivity, times L, which we don't know for now, divided by A. Rearranging the formula, we should be able to find out that L is 8 meters. So now let's try a third question, which is slightly different, but this is the one that is actually more commonly asked in examinations. They will ask you, what is the new resistance of a piece of wire if they change some properties? Usually they will change the length and the cross-sectional area. So for this question, why is the new resistance if the length of the wire is doubled and the cross-sectional area is tripled? Please try this out. Okay, now let's go through the answers. So at first, the resistance of the wire is R, which will be equal to rho L over A. However, for the new wire, rho, which is the resistivity, would remain the same because the material did not change. 
However, the length doubled, so we will write it as 2L divided by 3A because the cross-sectional area is tripled. So after we simplify this, we should get 2 over 3 rho L over A. So if we sub in R to the equation, the new resistance of the wire will be 2 thirds of its original resistance.